Welcome to the Haley Cruise, a data collection mission in the Pacific Ocean whose main objective is understanding how ocean circulation interacts with the climate. This week, I bring you the exciting conclusion to the three-part Haley Cruise series in the South Pacific. If you haven't seen those yet, you definitely need to check them out. Simply click the links in the description box. All right, everyone, let's get started. To understand why a crew of intelligent scientists and sailors are traveling to the middle of nowhere to drop expensive equipment into the far depths of the ocean, we need to first meet neodymium. Neodymium has many uses, but one of its biggest claims to fame was discovered in 1983 when they mixed this element with iron and boron, creating the strongest permanent magnet ever made. So why do you care? Because that mega mix is what makes it possible to miniaturize many electronic devices, including your cell phone. So every time you watch a TikTok on the go, you can give a shout out to your good friend, Neodymium. But that's not all this wonder element can do. It also acts as a tracer for water circulation. Much like injectable dyes are used to get clear MRI readings for doctors, neodymium traces water circulation for our scientist. Now that we've met neodymium, let's meet its isotopes. What's an isotope? Super easy. Simply put, an isotope of an element has the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. Same element, different amount of neutrons. For example, let's pretend a neodymium atom is an apple. You've got three red delicious neodymium apples that all look the same on the outside, but when you cut them open, they all have a different amount of seeds inside, just like the different number of neutrons in a neodymium atom. To illustrate the current water circulation theory, this is the Atlantic Ocean water basin. On the left, represented in blue, we have the North Atlantic Deep Water Current System, NADW, with an isotope signature of negative 13. On the right, represented in yellow, is the Antarctic bottom water, AABW, with an isotope signature of negative nine. Most textbooks will say the neodymium we are finding in these water masses are runoff from the land, but our dear scientists believe there are some holes in that theory. To research their new theory and measure ocean behavior, we've been sending down the multi-core to extract sediment from the ocean floor. We then break down each core into layers representing a segment of time, much like the rings on a tree, each layer reflecting the water circulation at that particular time. Scientists can then reconstruct the currents by the amount of neodymium we find at each layer. Let's say I collect a water sample from the sea floor 5,300 meters deep with a negative 11 ND signal and a negative 13 ND signal from a pore water sample collected 25 centimeters in the sediment dated 20,000 years ago. The water mass force fluctuates. Sometimes the force from the north is greater, sometimes it is greater from the south. The green represents where they are mixing. While these water masses are going back and forth, the ocean floor passively receives ND markers reflecting the water's state at that time. The water I measured at the sea floor is a mix of 50% AABW and 50% NADW. This shows us the deep water circulation is currently equally strong from north to south, while the older sample, 25 centimeters deep in the sediment, shows a much stronger ND signal, telling us the circulation from the north was strong 20,000 years ago. That's the classic theory. Now here's the twist. Our scientists believe water masses do not get all their ND signals from the surface in runoff water. Instead, they think the water mass is receiving ND signals from the ocean floor. For example, let's say I take a sediment sample of negative 11 ND. Classic theory would say that's an equal flow from north and south. With the new theory, adding the sedimentary ND source, we might interpret the signal of negative 11 as indicating only a southward flow of NADW. And AABW was simply not there at all, a completely different circulation pattern. This would mean the ocean floor isn't a passive receiver, but a very active component to the equation. And the coolest part? They're not exactly sure why they're getting these readings. It's a complete mystery. It opens the door to numerous possibilities. Very exciting news for curious scientists out there. So be sure to smash those like and subscribe buttons because this thrilling research has only just begun. And yours truly will be out in the field with these scientists every step of the way, giving you a backstage pass as we unlock the mysteries of the deep. This research is giving us a deeper understanding of ocean circulation. The sea not only stores and redistributes heat, but also important greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide. The more we understand this relationship, the better equipped we are to help our dynamic yet fragile planet.